It's a floating island in the sky with just one chest and a tree. And this is me, who decided that I wanted to survive here for 100 days and turn this island into something magical. Besides, it's hardcore. One mistake of mine will mean death. In this video, you will see the history of my development, as well as moments where I could lose this world in one moment. Hello, my name is Simon and this is my 100 days of Skyblock survival. Enjoy it! Day 0 Yes, I'm starting from day 0 and you can see my development in real time at the bottom right of the screen. I appeared on an island in the sky. There is absolutely nothing here except grass, one tree and a chest. Although somewhere far away I see some other islands. I began to break the ground and immediately enlarged my island. Now you can safely cut down this tree. The main task now is to get a tree seedling for further survival. And now I will be sure that he will fall on the island. I broke the chest and moved it to another place. And put all the things into it. Crafted a workbench. And here it is a sapling of a tree and I can be calm. I think it's time to do the cobblestone generator. This is perhaps one of the most important elements of Skyblock survival. After all, it is he who will provide me with the necessary blocks, of which there are not so many here. But to mine cobblestone you need a pickaxe. Well, the beginning of survival is laid. Having obtained some cobblestone, I crafted a stove and made charcoal. I needed to craft torches. Because the night is coming, and I don't need spawning monsters here. Having made a few more picks, I went to mine cobblestone. Day 1. I'm still standing and extracting cobblestone, because at the initial stage it needs a lot. And now my second tree has grown, which I think it's time to cut down. I crafted more pickaxes again and started mining cobblestone. Perhaps I will spend a little time on this at the beginning, so that later I would go about my business. Day 2. I have some cobblestone and I think it's time to expand my island. In order to save money, I made half blocks. By the way, this is not only economical, but also very convenient, because monsters will not spawn on the semi-blocks, the most important thing is not to forget to put them in the lower position. I have plans to make a circle, so having outlined the center of the island, I build 25 blocks in each direction to make a cross. Now you need to put it all together, I prepared the layout of the circle in advance, so it's not that difficult. The most important thing is not to accidentally fall into the abyss. And so I complete the circle and how suddenly. This obviously didn't go according to plan. And I could not even think that the foliage could catch fire because of the lava. Unfortunately, the tree could not be saved, but I have one more. In the meantime, the marking of the circle is already ready. Day 3. It's time to start building it from the inside. Nothing complicated, you just need to alternately put the blocks so that there is no void in the middle. And now half of the circle is ready, but now I have run out of half blocks and cobblestone. And that means it's time to go back to the generator. Day 4. Crafted a few more half blocks, I hope they will be enough. And set about building the second half. And here are the last couple of blocks and my island is ready. Well, it's very difficult to call it an island. It's most likely a stone platform that I'll be surviving on for now, but I'm hoping to turn it into something beautiful. I broke the remaining blocks of earth and replaced them with semi-blocks, which is what in the earth here is worth its weight in gold. And somewhere on the edge I decided to make a small tree farm. I put four blocks of grass, some torches for lighting, and planted the first two oak seedlings. I also placed a chest, a workbench, and a stove near the farm. And now I thought it would be nice to build down and make another platform at the bottom. It is very convenient to go down the water, but the most important thing is not to fall down. Day 5. Moved my cobblestone generator closer to the chests, this is where it belongs. Of course, I don't have a lot of resources and blocks right now, but I tried to somehow decorate this place, because here I will spend a very, very long time. Well, this looks much more interesting. And then I noticed that three seedlings fell from one tree, that's how good luck is. Day 7. Cut down four trees on my new farm. And I thought that it would be nice to increase it, the more trees will grow at the same time, the better. And again stood up for the extraction of cobblestone. Day 8. Almost all the trees have grown, which means it's time to cut them down again. By the way, I have accumulated quite a bit of cobblestone. I ate my first apple and ate a little. I crafted some ladders, but I need to somehow go down and climb down. There are stairs, which means that water can be removed. By the way, this is the very center of my island, so I put a board and a torch here. What a beautiful dawn. Day 9. New day, which means new things. Went down and continued to build the platform. I have plans to make a mob farm. 
Well, for now it will not be quite the usual mob farm. At the bottom I build a small platform, this is where the mobs will fall. Yes, I'm not going to kill them myself and risk my life, I have a more interesting idea. And now the lower platform is ready. At the bottom, I even arranged a little part where I will go down and go up. Now it's time to start building the second platform where the monsters will spawn. And then I played a little and started building not a platform, but a bridge, which should be a little higher. Well, now you need to clean it up. From the central block I put 7 blocks in different directions and now I connect all this with blocks. Finally, the monster spawn platform is ready. And now you can do the construction of the bridge, from which I will pour water. Water will fall into the center and spill to the edges of the platform and the monsters will fall down. It's very simple and most importantly safe, but it still needs to be tested. Day 10. I started cutting trees again, by the way, one very large tree grew. To be honest, I don't really like such trees, because they are more difficult to cut. And here is the X moment. The first flush of mobs was successful. And yes, now I can safely collect resources in a completely safe way. The most important thing I need here is bones from skeletons. I built a small arch, here I will grow berries. In the meantime, the monsters have spawned again and you can throw them down. And then there was the enderman. The most important thing is not to look into his eyes, because I will immediately say goodbye to this world. Luminous berries are not only beautiful, but also delicious. And now I have my first source of food. And I went down again for resources, which are quite a few here. And so I decide to go on a trip to a distant island. The thing is, I don't have wheat seeds. My island originally had grass, but unfortunately I never received the seeds. Oh yes, and at this point I realized another problem that is more serious. I don't have a block of grass. Yes, I broke everything. There is land, but there will be no grass on it, and this is very bad. And now I have guests waiting. Although even two guests. And they are so well disguised in the grass. I crafted a bow and it's time to go hunting. Day 11. And here I am on a new island. I'm only here for the grass, or rather the wheat seeds that can be obtained from it. I still have a little time and wheat seeds, which means I can go home. A few mobs have gathered and it's time to flush them down. I quite like this method, it is much better than everyone to shoot with a bow. Inert meal is a very good thing, because right now I can make an endless source of water. And now everything is ready. The well moved a little lower. Well, now you can start building a small garden for wheat. I put a step and poured water into it, it is very convenient. And crafted a hoe to plow the land. Planted the first seeds for the next harvest. Day 12. I don't really want to wait, why tembolium if there is bone meal, so I started accelerating the growth of wheat and its production. And so I crafted the first normal food. Survival is in full swing. Started harvesting wood again. And at the same time I go to wash off the mobs with water for the extraction of bones, which are now very much needed. And now my beds are completely sown with seeds, which means that I will have enough bread to eat. And now it's time to build a really real standard mob farm on a skyblock. I decided to start from the bottom. I put up 22 or 23 blocks so that the mobs stay alive. Now you need to make a pipe through which mobs will fall. Day 13. To make it more beautiful, I made the base from cobblestones, and the inside from half blocks of boards, so that I could see which mobs would fall. And now I'm already at the top and you can start building the main part for spawning mobs. I broke the top block and the water poured down, now I can go down and up very quickly. I went down, and here is already an army of octopuses, why they appear here, I don't understand, it seems that there is not so much water. I made a floor for water, you can do the walls. Demolished the upper platform and spilled the first bucket of water. As it turned out, you need to add another block so that the water stops at the edge of the blocks. Day 14. Went to mine cobblestone because blocks ran out. Day 15. The monster spawn area is ready. I arranged the hatches along the edge and closed them. Thanks to them, the monsters will think that there are blocks here and move forward. Spilled two buckets of water into each section. Most of the farm is ready and it remains to make the walls and roof. The walls will be two blocks high to prevent endermen from spawning. Day 16. 
The last stage is the construction of the roof. And now my mob farm is completely ready. In the meantime, all the wheat has ripened and it is a pleasure to collect it. Crafted a few swords to test the farm in practice. And now a whole bunch of monsters are waiting for me below. And luckily everything works very well. But then the first creeper exploded. And the second one too. I quickly managed to build everything up. Raised the platform a little higher to hit the mobs from below, this should help a little. And here are my mob stats. An ingot of iron should drop from zombies, very rarely, but it should. On average, this is one ingot per 100 zombies killed, but so far I don't see an ingot. Oh yeah, and you know what's really sad? Zombie does not drop grass. This is very, very bad. In previous versions of this zombie skyblock, it was possible to mine grass, which means mining future blocks of earth, but now the situation is a little more complicated. Day 17. Again, I went to kill monsters in the hope that I would get an ingot of iron. There is no iron, but there is the first helmet mine. I spent the whole day trying to get resources from mobs, closer to night I became for the extraction of cobblestone. Day 18. Today I have grandiose and very dangerous plans. It's time to go to hell. I used to get iron with zombies, craft a lighter and armor, and only after that I went to a dangerous hell, but now. Now the situation is a little different. Although this is even for the better, hardcore has become even more dangerous and even more interesting. I built the portal and wanted to decorate it, well, at least decorate it somehow. And now you need to light it up. And now it can only be done with the help of lava. If the boards catch fire from the lava, and the fire hits the obsidian, then the portal should activate. Not much time has passed, but it still happened. Well, dear friends, it's time to go on a dangerous journey through hell, and I really hope that I will stay alive. But before that, I decided to get some more cobblestone, because it is very much needed in everyday life in the lower world. Day 19. Time to go. Since I couldn't get iron with zombies, I hope to get some gold with pig zombies. And for this you need a small farm for them to spawn. Started building the first lower platform. I go up and calculate the blocks for spawn. It will be a small farm on three floors. And now not only zombie pigs appear, but also piglins and... And even Enderman. And here's the problem, he got aggro on me. I hope he is downstairs and will stay, because I still want to live. At this point, I really, really regret not taking my bow and arrows with me. And here. Well, it's just luck, I don't know how he got there, but if I hadn't had time to throw him down, he would have killed me. Day 20. I did not have enough blocks and I could not complete the farm. But now you can test it. But for everything to work, first you need to build a safe place to kill the zombie pigs. For a very long time I could not figure out how it would work and built what I could. It doesn't look very good, but the main thing is that it works. And now you need to choose a victim. And all the pig zombies fall into the pit, where I will already kill them. And here are my first two gold bars. Day 21. Returning to hell, a ghast was waiting for me. But I quickly killed him. And now it's time to mine the gold. Returning home at night, I crafted a golden armor. Now the piglins won't touch me and I'll be safe. Day 22. All day I stood in the generator mining cobblestone and only in the morning I crafted half blocks again to complete the platforms for the zombie pigs. Day 23. I am here again, but this time in better conditions, because no one should touch me. The lowest platform is completed and I expanded it by another three blocks so that the pig zombies would not fall into the abyss from the upper platforms. Now it remains to complete two more platforms. I am finishing building the platform and here is the Enderman, well, of course, I won't touch him and I hope that he will leave soon on his own. I also changed the pig zombie room a bit. And this is how my initial farm looks like now. Here I noticed a piglin and decided to trade with him. He gave me some soul sand and thread. 
By the way, piglins are the only source of gravel mining here. Again, I'm aggroing myself with pig zombies and am engaged in reducing their population. They become a little less, and I get a little more gold. Day 24, I got half a stack of gold bars, which is a pretty good start. Harvested wheat and made some bread. Returning to hell, he began building a road to the fortress of hell. Blazes should spawn in it. I built the road, but I don't want to go there yet. I went back to the piglins and started trading with one of them. How suddenly another one came and now there are two of them. And another one came. Apparently they really like gold, and I like their resources that they give. And here's what I got from them. The most important thing for me here is gravel, this is now the most valuable resource, because very soon I will be able to make earth from it. Day 25. I decided to go to the fortress and reconnoiter the situation. Obtained an infernal outgrowth, which is needed for brewing a potion. And he began to break the semi-blocks, while they are here, then no monsters will appear, but I already need monsters. And yes, here is the first batch. But I need ifrits. And here he is, it's very good, but very, very dangerous. First hit on me, but I survived. I returned to the fortress and added some walls so that ifrits would not fly away and stay in place. Second try. They are two and I am one. And here is another hit and I immediately do not have more than half of my health. Now it's really very dangerous, but it's hardcore. And now he was left all alone and this is my chance. Yes, I did it. I have my first fire rod, but I need another one to brew potions. And I was wounded again and I returned to the island. Day 26, crafted some bread because I ran out of food. I replaced the cobblestone at the well with blocks of earth and planted the first reed, it will soon be needed to brew the potion. Returned back to hell to get some more fire rods. And this time I was very, very lucky. At night, I took up a bit of cobblestone mining, because there was almost no cobblestone left in the chests. Day 28. My cane has already grown, which is very good. From the mine cobblestone, I made a few half blocks. And I think now is a great time to get some land. Thanks to the gravel I got from the piglins and the remnants of my land, I crafted the rocky ground. But already from it you can get the usual one. This is not a very complicated matter and it is very simple to extract the land, but it is much more difficult to extract gravel for this land. Started building a platform. This will be my second tree farm, but for larger trees. And suddenly I met a zombie villager. Well, this is a very big luck. Therefore, without wasting time, I put him in a boat and built a roof over him so that he would not burn out in the sun. Day 29. I continue to build a platform for future trees. But also on this platform I will collect mobs and look for zombie residents. Now I'm just lucky to catch another one, but I need at least one more. And now the platform is ready. And I think it's time to go to a new island. This time it will be a mushroom island, and I came here only for one mushroom, because I need it for one important craft. And here is the pickled spider eye, cooking stand and fire powder. Add some gunpowder and I already have an explosive potion of weakness to heal zombies. Night has come and it's time to go hunting. And after a few minutes. Well, it's just another stroke of luck. Finally I got lucky one more time. But now they got into the same boat, and this is not entirely good. But this is better, because when I treat them in the same boat, problems could arise. Day 30. Gathered a crop of wheat and sowed a new one. I went to mine gold, which is very necessary for crafting golden apples. Here I spent the whole day and returned home at night. Crafted two golden apples and it's time to cure our future residents. And while I wait for them to transform, I again went to the cobblestone generator. Day 31. The transformation was successful, I would not say that it was so difficult, although I really searched for the zombie inhabitants for quite a long time. 
It's time to give these two residents some living space on this platform. Made some beds and profession blocks. And now I have two farmers. I gave them some bread in the hope that they would multiply. But there was a problem, the miracle did not happen. Perhaps today they are just tired and will try again tomorrow. At night I mine cobblestone again. Day 32. Watching the villagers, but so far nothing is happening. Well, while I'm waiting, I decided to get down to business and get some cobblestone again. And you know what? They just stood in one place all day and looked at each other. And then I realized that something was wrong. Day 33. This time I went to hell on a new island for weeping mines. With their help, I can go down without water. Fortunately, they can even be obtained by hand, although earlier I thought that scissors were needed. And he decided to rebuild the gold farm. Thanks to the vines, he went down and built a small platform. Now pig zombies will fall here and I won't have to kill them. Day 34. Completely rebuilt the fall site, now it looks much simpler and more beautiful. And time to check the farm in action. And everything works great. I have never had so much experience on the skyblock at the same time. But experience is not the most important part of this farm. Much more important is gold mining. And here again there was a gas. I killed him, but a problem arose, he broke the vine along which I descended, but I don't have blocks to get out. Therefore, you need to think from what is available. And surprisingly, three chests and my half blocks were enough for me. Day 35. Visited my villagers, but they are still alone, and now I'm really starting to worry. Went to change the zombie pig platforms a bit. Added a few blocks to prevent the spawn of ghasts. I don't know if this will help, but we'll find out soon enough. I also thought it would be nice to build a piglin market. Brought the first piglin on the boat. But then a second one suddenly came and sat down beside him. I did not understand what it was, but I immediately thought that it would be nice to put all the piglins in boats. Day 36. Brought the last piglin and he himself got into the boat. Now I have six merchants who can give me valuable resources for gold. And so that they would not disappear, I decided to give everyone a helmet. Although I know that they are already in the boats and this should not happen, but when they put on something, they will definitely be here forever. And it's time to trade a little with them. For convenience, instead of a cobblestone, he put gates. I got some gravel and now I need to get flint from it. I want to craft an archer's table from it and change the profession of the inhabitants, perhaps the problem with their reproduction arose precisely because of their profession. I spent the rest of the day mining gold. Day 37. Some gold has accumulated again and you can trade with the piglins. Now it is really convenient to do this. One chest is not enough, so I put another one. Five stacks of gravel, this is a really important resource right now. I made several tables of archers and replaced the composters with them. I also made seven gold ingots from pieces of iron. Now I understand that trading with piglins was very, very successful. At night he went hunting in the hope of finding another zombie villager, but nothing happened. And for the first time I decided to sleep on this skyblock. Day 38. Now I have two archers, the villagers have successfully changed professions. And I even traded a little with them, getting some sticks from the tree. In the meantime, he went to the extraction of wheat. I gave wheat to the inhabitants, although before that I gave them a lot of bread, but maybe wheat will change the situation. I'm standing waiting. Waiting. And nothing happens. Night fell again and I went hunting in the hope of meeting the zombie villager again. I've been thinking that if these two don't want to breed, then maybe if you add a few more inhabitants to them, then the situation should change. Therefore, now the main task is to find a few more residents. Day 39. I got some carrots in such a simple way, and then suddenly. A block of earth disappeared from the house, I thought it was some kind of bug. But no. It happened again. Maybe this is some kind of Minecraft update, but I've never seen this before. Residents added some blocks and lighting. And again went to the extraction of gold. I also crafted my first golden carrot. But this is the best food in Minecraft. At this point, I thought it would be nice to get some more iron to make hoppers. After receiving them, I would be able to improve my mob farm. The gold farm is working fine and it seems that guests no longer appear, which is very good. But this is not good at all. I would call it cheating. While all zombie pigs fall down and die, these little zombie pigs descend on chickens and remain completely alive. 
Because of them, I almost lost this world several times. At night I went to the platform again, maybe I'll be lucky today. But I never met a zombie resident, so I went back to sleep. Day 40. Returned to my gold farm again. I decided that during the day I would mine gold, and at night they would return and look for a zombie villager. I noticed that zombie pigs get a little stuck on the blocks because of the fence and therefore replace the fence with blocks. Again, a good amount of gold bars has accumulated, which means you can start trading. This time I give two gold bars to each section and each piglin gets one gold bar. They give me resources, I give them gold again. And now my inventory is full of useful resources again. But I don't like the fact that very often piglins aggro me and one of them with a bow constantly shoots at me. Day 41. Went downstairs to mine another batch of pieces of gold. And from them again I received another one and a half stacks of gold bars. Now I'm in the process of getting pieces of iron to make hoppers. Very rarely, but still, piglins give these pieces of iron. And then I remember that you can make a basalt generator, but for this you need to go to another island. And here I am. The chest contains a book from the creator of the map. It has been here since the previous versions of the game, when you immediately get here from a regular island when you break a block and start your survival here. I took the soul sand, the lava, and the chunk of ice and came back. Started building a basalt generator. As long as I mine it here, in the meantime, my gold farm will work and it is very efficient. Day 42. Started testing this generator and noticed that blocks here appear much faster than cobblestone. And by the way, breaking them also seems to be a little faster even with an ordinary stone pickaxe. But I noticed that periodically pig zombies stop aggroing me. I went downstairs and decided to stand below. When I'm here, they don't stop falling, but when I'm standing in the generator or trading with piglins, very often they just stand still. I don't know what it is, but I don't really like it. And I started trading with piglins again. Day 43, at this point, my piglins broke. I don't even know what to call it. Let me just think that they are very happy about the amount of gold I gave them. But now I have two more stacks of gold again, and I think this will be the final trade with them, because this time, they are very angry. I can't even get close to them. And I have one life left. And at this moment I understand that my golden armor just broke. Day 44. And from the mined pieces of iron, I crafted 50 iron ingots. 50. Iron. Ingots. That's a lot. I don't even have an iron farm and iron golems. I went to get a tree. And crafted some hellfires. With them, the damage is twice as much as from the usual ones, so they are very effective. I started mining wood again, because I need to make more chests for the funnels. And now I have 10 hoppers. And it's time to start automating the mob farm. And everything works great. Mobs fall, take damage from campfires, and resources go into chests. Everything works perfectly. Day 45. It started to rain. I looked to the residents and unfortunately. Unfortunately, no success. Well, now I'm sure that I need a few more new residents, I hope they will help fix the situation. And I thought that it's time to start mining new blocks of land. And now I already have two stacks of land, and I went to bed satisfied. Day 46. After sleeping, the rain stopped, which is very good. But here is the situation that I have now is not very good. A lot of time has passed and I have not been able to start trading with the inhabitants, because I simply have no one to trade with. But the fact that now I have a source of resource extraction from mobs pleases me. It's night again, which means it's time to hunt. So many mobs and not one zombie inhabitant. Day 47 they just look at each other and that's it. This is a fiasco, a complete fiasco. The residents went to bed, and I again went in search of a zombie villager. And now I see him, it's just a miracle. But you know what? I have two minutes before dawn to save him. Actually, I really tried. I did not have time to find the boat, so I wanted to save him with water, and I almost succeeded. Day 48. 
The news is very sad. The only zombie resident in the last 20 days and I couldn't even save him. I just forgot about the boat and the roof, alas it's my fault. Day 49. Went to the extraction of cobblestones. At night, he also began hunting in search of a zombie resident. And here are my stats. 7 villagers killed by zombies per 300 normal zombies. Everything is very bad. Day 50. Started a trip to a new winter island. I need spruce seedlings. This is my favorite tree. And by planting 4 seedlings together, you can get a very 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 large tree. And this is a lot of resources. And I started getting these seedlings. I have 5 spruce seedlings, which will be very useful to me very soon. And you just look at it. 9 zombies at the same time and not one zombie villager. That night, luck was not on my side again. Day 51. It's time to solve the problem with the residents. I looked at several tutorials on their reproduction and it turned out that food should be given to each inhabitant and not to some separately. For reproduction, one inhabitant needs 15 bread. So I started harvesting wheat to craft it. I crafted bread and this amount should definitely be enough. Well, now you need to separate them so that every resident can definitely get food. Now I know for sure that each of them has food and it remains only to wait. And after a few minutes, they began a romantic relationship. That is, I spent 20 days looking for another zombie villager who was not really needed. In any case, I can finally turn my plans into reality. I need villagers to get tools and armor. I went to the piglin farm to get some gold. Crafted gold bars, day 52. Put a few chests in the warehouse because there isn't enough room. And he began active trading with piglins. I need to get some iron pieces to make iron ingots. And so I made three profession blocks for toolmakers. My residents are sleeping and finally there are three of them, but this is just the beginning. I went down to the mob farm to pick up the threads and the farm works very well. I made blocks of wool with thread, as well as several beds. And of course, he put these beds in the residence. And I slightly changed the location of the fence and professional blocks to save space. Day 53 it started to rain and an iron golem appeared. And the inhabitants immediately began to multiply again, I was really waiting for this for a very long time. The chests ran out of cobblestone, so I went to mine it. I made a full-fledged floor for the residents and installed lighting. Killed an iron golem to get some iron ingots and it's much faster than trading with piglins. He made bone meal and went to grow wheat for the residents. And now the rain has stopped. With the resulting wheat, I crafted a stack of bread. And he killed another golem again. You need a lot of sticks to trade with archers, so of course I went to get wood at night. I spent all night doing this. Day 54. Crafted boards, as well as sticks and started the first trade with the inhabitants and received the first emeralds. He distributed the bread into equal parts and gave it to the inhabitants for reproduction. I have four archers, this is enough to get a lot of emeralds. And of course I started trading with a toolmaker and bought my first stone tools from him. And now he has the opportunity to sell railroad, and thanks to this, he is updated faster. Well, I killed the golem again, I think it's time to think about your iron farm, which will bring free iron. I spent the whole night again for the extraction of wood. Day 55. Every day there are more and more inhabitants and now their number is enough for me to make an iron farm. I decided to build it on a separate small platform. I separated a few small villagers to take them back to my farm later. And now I can buy a diamond axe with durability too from the first toolmaker. I started making a round platform for an iron farm. Yes, I really like to build circles, I don't know why, I just like it. I made a circle from half blocks of spruce, just so that there would be at least some variety. After making one small area for building a farm, I stepped back 15 blocks and started making another one. I had an idea to make some small compact farms. Day 56. The morning began with active wood mining. Started building a farm. I put profession blocks, as well as three beds. For a golem to appear, only three inhabitants are enough. And the evening is a great opportunity to quickly take the residents to the farm. I lure them in with the beds, moving them farther and farther and deeper into the spot I want. Slightly changed the location of the beds so that they would be opposite the profession blocks. I made a room where zombies will live, and also took care of the part for the spawn of iron golems. Day 57. Slightly increased the platform so that it would be possible to lure the zombies into the room. I removed the lighting from the tree farm, this is where I will again look for the zombie I need. And now the night has come and it's time to bring the zombies. I need a zombie that will take some block in his hand so that it does not disappear. 
I started to lead him to the farm in here. To be honest, I didn't think about it at all. The inhabitants were frightened of the zombies and, of course, the golem spawned. So that he does not appear again, I put pressure plates. And again he began to look for the right zombie, but not one of them took a block from this gang. And here again the zombie I needed was found and I began to lead him into the room. I closed it and... Well, this is no longer funny. Seriously. And only now I thought of closing the inhabitants so that they would not be frightened and the golem would not appear. Day 58. The last two zombies started to burn in the sun, but suddenly it began to rain. It's just a gift of fate. Unfortunately none of them took the block, but I had another idea. I enlarged the room and brought zombies into it. And also put him in a boat, this is also a great option, so that he does not disappear. Closed it and here is the first zombie I have. I also decided to save the second zombie and left it under the roof. Spilled water on top of the farm. I set fires of souls, chests and, of course, funnels so that iron would fall into the chests. Broke an unnecessary part of the platform. Put up a fence to see when the golem falls. I broke the blocks in the room with the zombies and immediately a golem appeared. And I already have the first iron. I took the opportunity to search for another zombie. I wanted to make three iron farms in order to quickly get the inhabitants to the tools and armor I needed. Instead of the old zombie, I planted a new one that had a block in its hand. And another sat next to him. I noticed that the idea with the fence turned out to be not very good, the iron remains on the blocks and does not fall into the funnels. Day 59 I lit the tree farm again, so far I don't need the monsters anymore. I noticed that the iron still remains on the blocks, so I decided to make everything with blocks, of course I would like to put glass here, but so far I don't have it. Gathered ripe wheat and sowed it again. Went to get wood. I've been spending a lot of time doing this lately. Went down to the mob farm and took all the threads to make some more beds. I crafted boards and lay down to rest for one minute so that phantoms would not spawn. Day 60. Great morning to get some emeralds from archers. I gave the toolmaker iron and he became a master, now I can buy a diamond pickaxe for efficiency too. And I started trading with another villager. I need several villagers to get the tools so that I can find the ones I need and combine them into one perfect tool to use. I came to check the iron farm and notice that it does not work. I waited, but the golem never appeared. And I realized that the problem is in the golem that appeared among the inhabitants and, of course, I killed him. Closed the zombies so that the inhabitants could get some sleep. They started getting scared again and the golem immediately spawned. This is not the first time, so I know what to do. Although the villager's farm is far from the iron farm, it's very strange that the golem of the villagers affects my farm. At night I made another platform for the future farm and so far the golem spawned very well. Day 61. Every day I have more and more buildings, and there is no longer enough cobblestone. And at this point, I thought about rebuilding the cobblestone generator and improving it. I already have a diamond pickaxe for efficiency and can afford to mine more cobblestone. He put funnels, steps and cobblestones on the funnels. I started pouring water into the steps, it's just insanely convenient, because the lava will not come into contact with water in any way and will not flood it. Spill the source of lava. In this way, with just one bucket of lava, I got five appearances of cobblestone at the same time. I made a roof from semi-blocks and stood on a test cobblestone mining. But then I realized that the cobblestone does not fall into the chests because of the pressure plate. Day 62. Having removed the slab, of course, the cobblestone fell into the chests. And I took all the iron from the farm and noticed that the golems are gone again. And of course, at this time, the golem appeared among the inhabitants, but I still do not understand how it affects the iron farm at such a distance. From a villager, I got the opportunity to buy a diamond axe for efficiency and durability too, and this is a great chance to combine these axes. In the meantime, the golem didn't show up on my farm that day. But as soon as I gave the inhabitants the opportunity to sleep and after they began to get scared, of course the golem spawned. This situation, of course, did not suit me, I do not have the time and desire to constantly monitor this farm. From the extracted iron, I made iron blocks, as well as an anvil. By combining 4 axes, I got 1 excellent axe for efficiency 4 and durability 3. And at night, of course, I started mining wood with it, and I waited 62 days for this moment. Day 63. Met a traveling merchant and bought blocks of moss and a gourd from him. And I started trading with archers again, I have an axe, but I still need a good pickaxe, but I still haven't found a resident to get it. 
I started building another farm and while it was night, I decided to lure the zombies into the room so that later there would be no problems like last time. I brought one zombie and took advantage of the moment to make another room to bring the second zombie. And now I just have to wait for the inhabitants and finish building these farms. Day 64. The morning began with the killing of another golem. And of course the farm stopped again. I made composters and brought two residents to the future iron farm. I restarted the inhabitants again and the farm started working. And I had an idea how to fix it. Day 65. It's time to solve the problem. To do this, you just need to limit the appearance of golems in the inhabitants. To do this, I closed the entire territory with semi-blocks. I also put semi-blocks on the berry farm, where the golem once appeared. Inspected the entire area and put pressure plates. And I hope I killed the last golem here. I restart the inhabitants again, so that the iron farm would work. I went to collect wheat for residents, because new residents have not appeared for a long time, and I need them for trade and an iron farm. And in general, I decided to get rid of unnecessary toolmakers who sold bad tools. Day 66, I finally found the pickaxe I needed for strength and connected the pickaxes. I checked the iron farm and it works fine, so my guesses about the golem among the inhabitants were correct. I spent the rest of the day harvesting wood. Day 67. And I got 15 stacks of wood. I cut down absolutely all the trees that grew here, I think this amount will last for a long time. And among the inhabitants I notice another golem. And I realize that I didn't put the slabs on the archery tables. But this should be the last time. I bought several pickaxes for efficiency 3 from a villager, combined them into one and connected it with my second pickaxe and now I have a pickaxe for efficiency 5 and durability 3. And of course, it's time to test it in action. And in 5 minutes I got 11 stacks of cobblestone. This is about 2 stacks of cobblestone in 1 minute, which is very good and I am very pleased with the pickaxe, as well as my cobblestone generator. And of course, I restarted the iron farm again, I don't know how many times, but I hope that the last one. After that he again went to the extraction of cobblestone. Day 68 I spot this villager who has become a bit of a fence. This is very interesting. Started trading with the villagers again and got the opportunity to buy an iron axe for a silk touch. From reeds I made paper, after books and bookshelves and also chairs for the profession of a librarian. I released the inhabitant in the fence. I went to the island to break a few blocks of grass, because as you remember on the main island, I broke absolutely all the grass. And I realized it only after I did it. Brought another villager to the farm. Day 69. Started building the second iron farm. I really hope that it will work simultaneously with the first farm. And the first golem has already appeared. After standing a little on the farms, I understand that he no longer appears on the first farm, this is very bad. Although the distance between farms is sufficient. At night, he again went to the extraction of wood. And yes, there is never too much wood. Besides, I want to build something with it. Day 70. I wanted to get a repair book from the librarians to add to my instruments. Therefore, breaking the pulpits, I changed the auctions with the residents and looked for the book I need. Not a little time passed, but I still could not find it and already began to doubt whether it was possible at all. And it's time to start decorating the cobblestone generator. Day 71 I made the foundation and started building the columns. I had an idea to build a house. An ordinary house, but it will have a cobblestone generator. And so I will close it and it will look much better than a box of cobblestones. Having made the base from wood, I started building the walls from cobblestone. I picked up the dimensions so that the generator would be inside this house. Started building the roof. At the base there will already be oak boards, as well as cobblestone steps. I put steps and use blocks of earth to somehow walk. While I was building the roof, phantoms swooped in again. Day 72. On the right side, I began to make a small window. And build up the base of the roof with spruce steps and boards. To prevent monsters from spawning, I added pressure plates. At the base of the first floor, I added semi-blocks of cobblestone. And he started building the roof of the first floor. Added a few more columns at the base of the house. And he began to randomly put semi-blocks for decoration. Day 73. And here is the result, but this is not the end. But you must admit that it looks clearly better than a cobblestone box. I added a fence to the walls, as well as hatches. And at that moment he went in search of the right book to fix. I never managed to get the book, but I was able to buy glass. And of course I added windows to my house. Installed the door. 
and my house is ready. It will be much more pleasant to mine cobblestone here. On the iron farm, I saw three stacks in the chest, but unfortunately the first farm did not work. Day 74, I finally found a repair book. It was really long. But when I was selling sticks in order to get emeralds, the resident changed the auction. He decided he didn't want to sell the book for repairs anymore. At this point, I was very upset because I had been looking for this book for several days. But I'm serious and I'll find her again. Day 75, I keep breaking pulpits and changing librarian trades. And a few minutes later, I found it again. And I bought two repair books and added them to my axe and pickaxe. Went to the gold farm to fix my tools and it's really cool. Perhaps now these tools will be enough for me to survive. I collected all my gravel ground and made rocky ground. And already plowing it, I got the usual one. I spent the rest of the day and night doing this. Day 76. I continue to turn the stony earth into ordinary and mine it. I have accumulated quite a bit of gravel, but I need land. I only have 25 days left and I don't like the island I have now. Behind the second iron farm began to build a second platform a little further. But as it turned out, two farms are now working simultaneously. And it's weird because it didn't work before. I noticed that the circle I made is not even, so I am rebuilding it. From iron he made himself iron armor. I started extracting oak, I will need it for future buildings. And of course, where without eating. I have 25 days left, during which time I must have time to turn my island into something beautiful and completely complete this survival. Day 77. I got 10 stacks of spruce, this is still not enough, but enough for the first time. Removed blocks of earth from the oak farm, my house will stand in their place. I realized that I don't have a home. Even the cobblestone generator looks nice and I have nowhere to live and storing chests on the street is also not very good. He began to lay the foundation for the future house. Put a cobblestone in the stove to get a stone. And killed the creeper. You have to be extremely careful during this time. For a long time I thought about the size of my house. And now the foundation is ready. I'm starting to make columns and a complete frame for a spruce house. Of course, this house will be somewhat reminiscent of a house for a cobblestone generator. Day 78, start building cobblestone walls inside frame, and also to make the floor of the second floor from spruce boards. It will be a two-story small compact house, here I will store my resources and survive. On the second floor, the walls will already be made of oak planks. Along the wall again I put columns made of spruce wood, and I divide the house into two parts in order to understand where the roof will be. I'm starting to think over the location of the large frame for the future roof. The house should be as similar as possible to the one that already exists. The base is ready and I just connect it all with spruce boards. I look at it from the side and so far it looks good. I'm making a window in the front roof. I start building a roof from cobblestone steps as well as ordinary blocks. When I started building the frontal part of the roof, phantoms flew in. And I went to sleep so that they would not disturb me. Day 79. And now you can continue building in peace and quiet. I put semi-blocks on the second floor and also complete the roof using spruce steps and boards inside. And having got out, he placed semi-blocks of cobblestone. I remember that there is a small window on the roof of the cobblestone farm and I decide to make it here as well. It took me a long time to figure out what it would look like. I don't really like the final version. I took up the construction of the lower roof and cover everything with half-blocks from spruce. Most of the house is already done. Placed lights inside for lighting and started making windows. Day 80. At the frame of the first floor I put semi-blocks of cobblestone. More and more I am decorating the outside of the house. I put steps along the walls and a fence. I put hatches near each window below, for some reason I really like this design. I install flashlights to make the house look a little brighter at night. Randomly in some places I change blocks of cobblestone to ordinary stone for a change. The outer part is ready, now you can start decorating the house inside. First of all, I break the floor and replace it with spruce boards. I put a workbench against the wall and also several chests opposite. Day 81. Started making stairs to the second floor. On the second floor, I will also have a warehouse with chests to make the most of all the free space. Finished the lanterns, so I crafted some more. I begin to gradually transfer all my resources from the street to my new home. I check iron farms and they work at the same time. And this is very strange because until now this has not happened. But of course I'm just happy. Gathered ripe wheat and sowed a new one. 
I began to throw away all unnecessary resources and things from the chests in order to make room. I decided to get some foliage as decorative blocks, because from the inside my house looks somehow sad. I put this foliage wherever possible, the situation did not improve much, but improved. Day 82 a golem has appeared on a block of earth. And I threw it down, I don't really need it here. I still keep moving things from chests outside to my storage at home. And now all the resources are in place. In the chests, of course, there is a complete mess and chaos, but I don't have much time to do this, and I know perfectly well that after a while the same thing will happen here. I understand that the island looks too grey and stone. And it's time to green it up. I decided to start with a cobblestone generator. I broke the old foundation from the stone and arranged the earth. In some places I put blocks of grass and soon this area will be green. When I came to the mob farm, I noticed that my chests were completely full and the resources did not get into the chest and began to transfer some of the resources to the warehouse on the second floor. At night, he went to the gold farm to get gold and start trading with the piglins again. I need a lot of gravel to bring my island to life. And at this point, I could just say goodbye to this survival. Just one wrong step and it's over. I didn't even realize what had happened. Having received two stacks of gold, I started trading with piglins. And now I have three stacks of gravel, but this is very, very little. Crafted another stack of gold bars again and continued trading. Day 84. I didn't get a single block of gravel in my last stack. So I returned home. After examining all the chests, I found two more stacks of gravel. I made stony earth with it and began to mine the usual one. I spent all day doing this. Crafted a golden carrot because the food ran out. And he continued to mine the land again. Day 85. And here are the last blocks of earth collected. In the meantime, the area near my cobblestone generator has completely come to life. And of course I really liked it. My plan was to revive this island as much as possible, although there were not so many blocks of land. I broke a few blocks of grass and put them outside my house. I went into the cobblestone generator, because the cobblestone had already ended. And ahead of me there is another very large building. Day 86. I look at this amount of cobblestone and understand that the generator is very efficient. Again began to extract spruce. The building I have planned will be larger than all the others. But the most important thing is to be on time, because there is not much time left. From the resulting spruce, I made chests and funnels and went downstairs to improve my mob farm. Chests fill up very quickly, so of course I decided to increase their number. Having broken the lower part of the farm, I began to put chests and funnels to them. And now there is much more space for resources. And I returned again to cut down the trees that remained. Day 87. And plus 16 stacks of wood. But this is certainly not very much, but should be enough for future construction. At this time, I slightly reduced the place for the residents to stay. But this is not for long, soon they will move to a brand new house. Remove the old cobblestone generator and berry farm. Day 88. I roughly understand what size the building will be, so I had to slightly increase the territory of the island. Because the place that is here now would definitely not be enough. I have made the foundation and am starting to build it from the inside. And he began to build the foundation for the future house. And it will not just be a house, it will be a big house for my residents. After the foundation, of course, the next thing to do is to start putting up columns from spruce in order to understand the future shape of the house. I made a stone cutter and with it I made myself polished inky bricks. And with their help, he made the foundation for the house. Day 89. I jump on the columns and put one more block of spruce. And I also combine all this design into one and make the basis for the house. When the base is ready, you can start building cobblestone walls. Having got out upstairs, he began to make the second floor. As you have already noticed, the house will really not be small, because there are quite a few residents and they also need comfort. And when the frame of the second floor was ready, I began to think over the construction of the roof. And at night the phantoms came again and I had to go to sleep. But only a few seconds were enough for me because now is not the time to sleep and I still have a lot of work to do. At the front of the house I wanted to make a beautiful skylight and a small room. Day 90. Work on building a house is in full swing. Engaged in the construction of the floor of half blocks of spruce. With the help of a stone cutter, he made steps out of cobblestone and proceeded to build the base of the roof. For a very long time I could not figure out how it would look and rebuilt the roof many times. At the side of the house, he replaced spruce logs with cobblestones and he started building the inner part of the roof from spruce steps and boards. Day 91. 
continue building the roof and build the front part with the window. I noticed that I made a mistake with the construction of the roof and had to rebuild everything again. And now, when the roof frame is ready, it remains to connect all this from the inside with spruce steps and blocks. Day 92. Most of the roof construction is already done and there is very little left. And now it remains only to put the semi-blocks on the very top of the roof. I look around the house and it looks good. From the inside, the house is certainly very spacious. At the base of the first floor I put stone steps. And near my house I notice a white sheep. It took 92 days before the animal appeared here. And that night the fun began. While I was killing the creeper, two zombies were scaring my inhabitants. Of course, I immediately began to rescue them. Although at this moment it was necessary to save me. Day 93. Kill the witch with a bow, it was a really fun night. I find a librarian behind this house with a book to fix. And of course, you need to save him so that he does not accidentally fall down. And when all the residents are safe, you can continue building the house. The first floor has a fence. And he began to arrange half blocks of spruce and lanterns on the second floor. Ordinary stone walls look bad and I tried to somehow improve them. Day 94. Most of the house is ready and I removed unnecessary blocks of land. Made windows on the first floor. He installed manholes for residents and now it will be very convenient to enter them. He took the rotten flesh from the warehouse and began to trade with the priest. I need some emeralds to buy lanterns. But I never found that librarian. Most likely he died that dangerous night and will never return. Therefore, I had to make charcoal for torches from spruce logs and make lanterns from them. And installed them on the first floor. Day 95. And now the house for the residents is ready. Perhaps it can even be called a mini cottage. I like it very much. Engaged in the design of the house from the inside and prepare it for the settlement of residents. And built a staircase to the second floor. On the second floor, I installed lanterns so that monsters would not spawn and started decorating the roof. Day 96. An idea came up to decorate the roof with vines from berries. They glow and also green, and this should somehow improve the house. And indeed with them the house begins to look much more comfortable. So that the berries do not grow to the very floor, I limited their growth with threads. Crafted an iron door. It is needed so that the inhabitants do not go out into the street and run around my island. And while it is night, I take advantage of the moment and move the residents to their new home. And he put more semi-blocks to make a full-fledged floor. Day 97. Instead of levers, I put buttons so that the doors would close when I go out. Removed all profession blocks and installed them on the second floor. I really hope that the residents are satisfied with their new living conditions. I began to remove the semi-blocks near the house and replace them with the ground. I got a few blocks of grass with an axe and randomly placed them near the ground so that it would turn into grass. An idea came up to make a pen for animals instead of the old territory for the residents. Day 98. Again, I replaced the half blocks with the ground. Of course now I have only one sheep, but soon there will be other animals. Rebuilt the well. I did not want to remove it and decided to leave it. And I still have some land left. And I also decide to use it and just make another green meadow. But now I put the ground already on the platform so that the island does not seem so flat. And this area looks really big. Although it seemed that I did not have so much land. Day 99. I decided to enlarge the animal pen a little. Now it doesn't seem so flat. I still have a few stacks of earth left and I also wanted to use them on the island. And every minute the territory becomes greener and greener. I lured the sheep into the animal pen. And with the help of bone meal added herbs throughout the area. I removed the portal to hell, it seemed to me that it did not belong here at all. And I moved it to my house on the second floor. And I tried to decorate it somehow. But I didn't succeed. I have the last 40 blocks of land left and I decide to use them for a wheat farm. After sowing the farm with wheat seeds, I added some fence and lanterns. Day 100. I notice another sheep behind the residence house. I brought her to the paddock and now I have another little sheep. In the chest, I found another stack of rocky earth, although I did not notice it before. And in this small clearing, I grew several trees. I climbed up the tree and looked around. Now this territory has become really really like a small island in the sky. And the rest of the time I spent cutting down all the trees on my farm. It was my 100 days of hardcore survival on Skyblock Island. So in 100 days from a small island in the sky with just a tree and a chest, I turned it into this. 
Despite the problems that arose with the reproduction of the inhabitants, as well as the iron farm, I still managed to change my island and build several buildings on it. Thank you all very much for watching. As for me it was a very interesting story of survival and I really enjoyed the development on this island. My name is Simon and we will see you soon.